Thrift stores and garage sales are a great way to recycle materials and save a few dollars in the process. Most of us are happy just to get a discount on clothes and knickknacks, but in rare cases, everyday people can find extraordinary items at a thrift store that all but guarantee their retirement. From diamonds to ancient artifacts and fine art, we are counting down 10 thrift store finds that made people rich. Our first find came to a lucky Pennsylvanian woman with expensive tastes. According to Bloomberg, Philadelphia resident Norman Eiffel was pursuing a flea market eight years ago when she stumbled upon a sleek silver necklace and paid $10 for it, having no clue that 60 years before it hung in the Museum of Modern Art. I thought it looked so tribal, Eiffel told Bloomberg. I wore it about four or five times max, and every time I wore it, people always admired it. I can't believe I had to call their necklace all this time and had no idea. It wasn't until three years later, when Eiffel visited an Alexander Calder jewelry exhibition at the Philadelphia Art Museum that she realized her prized piece of costume jewelry could be a bona fide artwork. After speaking with the exhibition's curator, Eiffel took the necklace to the Calder Foundation in New York, where its status as a genuine Calder was confirmed. Known for his kinetic artworks, Calder designed over a thousand pieces of jewelry throughout his career. In fact, Eiffel learned that the very same necklace she purchased was on display at New York's Museum of Modern Art in 1943. You can find a full-size Caldermobile on the market for between twenty dollars and $40,000, but this necklace ended up scoring Eiffel $300,000 at auction, which means a $267,000 profit after taxes and fees. Not bad for a second-hand necklace. In June 2015, a man found a golden egg at a yard sale and paid $14,000 for it. This might seem like a hefty sum, but the man was intending to melt the egg down and sell it as scrap metal. The man, who hails from the Midwest but wishes to remain anonymous, had been left financially stretched after he apparently overestimated what the tiny golden egg would be worth once melted down. He'd been hoping to make $500. In a fit of desperation one night last year, he typed egg, and the name engraved on the clock it contained, Vacheron Constantine, into Google. His search brought up a 2011 article in Britain's Daily Telegraph newspaper describing a frantic search for the object, the third imperial Easter egg made by Fabergé for the Russian royal family and estimated to be worth $33 million. Far from being a financial burden that the man had imagined, it appeared the golden egg might live up to its fairy tale namesake and avoid the furnace with just a few scratches. The man contacted Fabergé expert Kieran McCarthy and flew to London to visit McCarthy's workplace. After a tense exchange with the expert, it was revealed that the Midwest man indeed had his hands on the third imperial egg. McCarthy said the man had overestimated the value of the egg's materials, which were worth about what he paid for it, but underestimated its value as a work of art. In the end, the egg was returned to the royal family for an unbelievable $33 million. This was a wise gamble for the Midwestern man. Terry Horton insists she's not greedy and just wants a fair price for her $5 thrift shop find that some believe is an original Jackson Pollock painting. It's been more than 25 years since the Costa Mesa resident bought the 66 by 48 inch abstract painting that caused a stir in the art world. Horton, who drove a big rig for 20 years, retired in 1987 after a trucking accident. She took up hunting for bargain treasures, sometimes rummaging in trash bins for objects that stores had discarded, like a genuine eBay watch worth more than $2,000. I can't stand to see stuff thrown away if people can use it she said. During one of her thrift shop sprees in 1992, Horton bought the $5 painting as a gift to help cheer up a friend. Since it wouldn't fit through the front door of her friend's trailer, Horton ended up trying to sell it at a yard sale. A local art teacher came by and suggested the painting could be an original by Pollock, a late American abstract expressionist known for his drip and splash style. Horton, not having a clue who Pollock was, began researching. Her son helped her hire Paul Byrow, a forensic art specialist from Canada, thus began her quest to authenticate and sell the painting. The forensic expert, using triple fingerprint recognition, analysis of paint splatters from Pollock's studio and a side-by-side -side comparison to the painter's work Number no. 5 1948 concluded that the painting was real. Number no. 5 1948, by the way, sold for $140 million in 2006. Once Horton discovered this, she has been unwilling to bargain with the art world. She declined $2 million from a dealer and later $9 million from a Saudi art collector. Though the work is still unsold, it stands to make her a multi-millionaire when she finally decides to sell. A Filipino fisherman in western Palawan Island has owned the world's biggest pearl for decades, but he never knew its value. For the last 10 years, the 75-pound pearl was hidden in a bag under his bed. The fisherman's family would rub it with their hands before going out to sea in the belief it would bring them luck, said relative Eileen Amaral. The man then gave his pearl to a security officer for safekeeping while he moved into a new house. The pearl was sitting on a bench in her home for weeks until she found time to check the internet, and she was shocked to learn that it could be the world's biggest, at 67 centimeters long and 30 centimeters wide. It's been estimated to be worth more than $100 million. The fisherman, his father, and brothers found the irregular-shaped pearl inside a giant clam that stuck to their boat's anchor when they sought refuge from a squall on a reef, Amaral said.
said. The fisherman did not want to be identified, she said. She said that she, the fisherman, and his family decided to turn over the pearl to the city mayor, who had it displayed in a glass case in Puerto Princesa's city hall to attract tourists. The fisherman will receive a still unspecified reward from the local government, Amaral said, adding that he never intended to sell it. It's hard to imagine walking away from that kind of payday, but it's clear that the pearl had a huge personal significance to the fisherman. Rick Norsigian kept two boxes he bought at a garage sale under his pool table for four years before realizing they may be too valuable to store at home. The Fresno, California commercial painter learned that what was in those boxes he paid $45 for a decade ago could be worth more than $200 million. When I heard that $200 million, I got a little weak, Norsigian said. Art, forensic, handwriting, and weather experts teamed up to conclude the 65 glass plates in the boxes were photographic negatives created more than 80 years ago by Ansel Adams, the iconic American photographer whose images of the West inspired the country. Most Adams prints range between $4,000 to $70,000, and Norsigian had access to dozens of negatives, with which he could make countless more prints. Adams historians had believed the negatives were destroyed in a darkroom fire in 1937. According to another historian Norsigian consulted, Patrick Alt, Adams taught a class in Pasadena in the early 1940s. 1940s, and may have brought the glass negatives along as a teaching tool. How they ended up in a warehouse, however, is still unknown. In June, a single Adams print, Clearing Winter Storm Yosemite National Park, sold for $722,500, setting a new auction record for an Adams print. Though he has yet to sell the prints, Norsigian stands to make a boatload of money. It's not every day you can plop down two bucks and walk away with some junk that's worth a fortune. But that's what happened when a collector purchased an old-timey photo from a Fresno, California antique shop. It turns out the infamous outlaw Billy the Kid is in the photo, apparently taking part in a leisurely game of croquet. The image could be worth up to $5 million. Cajuns Incorporated, a numismatics firm, announced it had authenticated the photo earlier this month. The 4-inch by 5-inch tin type shows Billy the Kid in the summer of 1878. It may have been taken at a wedding, and he's alongside several members of his gang, the regular Regulators, according to the firm. In a statement, Cajun senior numismatist David McCarthy said it took more than a year of careful inspection before the firm would confirm the photo's authenticity. The only other known photo of the outlaw was taken in 1880 in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. That photo, a 2-inch by 3-inch tintype, pulled in $2.3 million in 2010, according to Cajuns. Billy the Kid, whose real name may have been Henry McCarty, has remained part of American frontier folklore for generations. He was a famous thief and gunfighter who was captured and sentenced to death, but escaped prison after killing two guards. Legend Legend has it that he killed 21 men, one for each year of his life. However, according to the New Mexico Tourism Department, the number was actually nine, four that he was solely responsible for, including the two guards, and five he helped dispatch. Regardless of his criminal past, this Billy the Kid photo is sure to make someone rich. A rare 184-year-old copy of the Declaration of Independence found by a bargain hunter at a Nashville thrift shop is being valued by experts at about 100,000 times the $2.48 purchase price. Michael Sparks, a music equipment technician, is selling the document in an auction March 22nd at Rainer's Historical Collectible Auctions in Burlington, North Carolina. The opening bid is for $125,000, and appraisers have estimated it could sell for nearly twice that. Sparks found his bargain last March while browsing at a Music City thrift shop in Nashville. When he asked the price on a a yellowed, shellacked, rolled-up document, the clerk marked it at $2.48. It turned out to be an official copy of the Declaration of Independence, one of 200 commissioned by John Quincy Adams in 1820. The standard price was altered significantly a year later, when Sparks sold the document to a Utah investment firm for $477,650, causing a national stir. He didn't know he had such a valuable piece until doing some online research, and then having appraisers at Rainers offer an opinion. Clearly it pays to do your research. A small painting bought at an auction and kept in a cupboard for years has been revealed as an original by British painter John Constable, worth an estimated 250,000 pounds, or $400,000. The postcard-sized painting, bought for 30 pounds in the British city of Canterbury around a decade ago, depicts a landscape by the 19th century artist and has been described as a lost item by the man who uncovered its origins. Antiques dealer and forgeries expert Curtis Dowling told Reuters he and his team spent about nine months studying the painting after the owner Rob Darville asked for their help. Darville's father, who bought the painting, suspecting it may be an original because of the faint signature on the back, had given him the painting as he was clearing his house. It's a fairly standard stock sort of constable painting. It's quite interesting in that it's small, which you don't see that often. It's something we've never seen before. It's really actually been quite a lost item, Dowling said. Constable, born in Suffolk, is famous for his landscape paintings of Dedham Vale, now known as Constable Country. His most famous work, The Hay Wayne, painted in 1821, now features on millions of prints hanging on walls around the world. 
A sweater bought last year for 58 cents at a Goodwill store sold in an auction in New York City for $43,020. That sweater, with West Point on the front and the word Lombardi written in black ink on a cotton swatch sewn inside, turned out to be owned and worn by Vince Lombardi when he coached from 1949 to 1953. A representative with Heritage Auctions, which auctioned off the sweater, said the buyer wished to remain anonymous. Other highlights of the auction include a pair of gloves used by Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston in their second fight, which took place in May 1965. They sold for $956,000. The historic Lombardi sweater worn by the Greg Coach was bought in June 2014 in Asheville, North Carolina by Sean and Ricky McAvoy of Knoxville, Texas. They sell vintage clothes online. I picked it up and thought it was cool, said McAvoy. At first, I thought it was a basketball warm-up. As is the case with Goodwill outlets, the sweater was weighed for cost and McAvoy got changed for $1. I didn't see the Lombardi tag when we walked out with it, or I might have made a connection, McAvoy said. My wife saw it, but she didn't know who that could be. Then, while watching a Lombardi documentary, the couple had an epiphany and decided to get the item appraised. They were startled when the sweater sold for just south of 50 grand. It was truly a diamond in the rough. Some 30 years ago, a woman in West London uncovered a gaudy giant ring at a yard that piqued her fancy. Thinking it was costume jewelry, she picked up the piece for a measly 10 pounds. Now that same gem is being auctioned off by Sotheby's London in July for nearly half a million dollars. It's expected to go for somewhere around a whopping 350,000 pounds to be exact. It turns out that the dusty gem, which the owner assumed was a fake and wore regularly in her daily life about town for decades, is actually a giant 26 karat cushion-shaped white diamond from the 19th century, giving it that eye-watering price. The antique shape and older style of cutting has disguised its true brilliance for all those years. So next time you find a cheap piece of jewelry at the thrift store, be sure to do your homework.